today on NBC This Morning when Washington took full measure of what the new first lady had chosen to wear on uh, what is uh, so far the most exciting uh, day of her life. And uh, since this requires your humble host to skate outside of his lane a bit, uh, we have asked uh, a much more able person to come on and talk us through this fashion, uh, potential fashion minefield. <laughs> Robin Gavon is a Pulitzer Prize winner with the Washington Post, uh, and uh, she's the fashion editor of the newspaper. And, and Robin, uh, you are of counsel to help us out here. The designer, <laughs> I understand, is Isabel Toledo, and yes. uh, uh, tell us uh, all you know about this. <laughs> Well, Isabel Toledo has actually been in business for quite a while, but she is a real entrepreneur. She's independent. She has a very small business. It's, you know, it's not easy to find her clothes. They're only sold in a handful of stores, and she doesn't advertise either because, I mean, that's just sort of beyond her budget. So this is someone who is really part of that rarely seen world of true independent designers on 7th Avenue. And so much, Robin, has been said about this new first lady. Uh, uh, and, and I've read a lot of the coverage as well. Uh, how great she looks in, in clothing, period. Yeah. How she is able to turn a J. Crew outfit, <laughs> affordable to most American families, even during a recession, into something that looks more like high fashion. Uh, just her, her comfort in her happen. own being. Right. And I am assuming that her endorsement of a, of a designer name is hugely valuable right now. Well, Brian, you're quite the fashion connoisseur, and you're actually <laughs> you're absolutely correct. I mean, for a designer, particularly someone like Isabel Toledo, to have her her ensemble being worn on such an auspicious occasion, I mean, it it's it's something that uh, you couldn't possibly buy. It's something that just will resonate so much with people because it puts this woman's name out there into the vernacular and it's you know it's really been a name that's only been known within the design industry she's really a designer's designer as they say I mean very well and respected I get, and I guess that the the next round of speculation uh, is about tonight and what Michelle Obama comes out in for the 10 inaugural balls this evening indeed there is veritable hyperventilation uh, <laughs> As we wait to see what she's going to be wearing this evening. And on a, they have kept a tight lid on it. There were multiple gowns made. And so even designers who created a gown aren't quite sure if she's actually going to wear it. And what about uh, what former first ladies, uh, let's limit it to our lifetime, uh, mm -hmm. what former first ladies have been uh, the kind of potential fashion uh, icons, though that's a, that's a heavy word <laughs> that uh, Michelle Ob Obama may well promise to be? Yeah, I mean, it, just on the topic of icon, I mean, I have heard that even Michelle Obama is somewhat uneasy with that term because that certainly sets quite a high standard uh, for your appearance every single day. But honestly, I, I think that we'd have to really go all the way back to Jackie Kennedy before we really started to get someone who kind of played on that in that field, the field of you know being an icon, someone who really had a style that was emulated. But more importantly, I think someone who had a style that really seemed to say something quite personal about who she was and about what the administration was all about. Now, I don't know what the deadline is at the Post. Are you going to make it when she emerges tonight to get in the morning papers with uh, the ball gown? I'm sure we'll stop the presses. Stop the presses. <laughs> Robin Gavon, uh, thank you so much for talking a uh, fashion-challenged uh, person through this, uh, this topic. I appreciate you coming by. My pleasure. Thank you from the Washington Post newsroom. We